plenty of people that have gotten a huge amount of medical problems due to the use of steroids. I have known friends, I have, you know, tons of people that I have seen this happen to. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of it is genetics. You know, George Burns smoked till he was 100 years old. And you know what? It didn't matter. He just kept on going. There's other people that smoke and by the age 40, they have emphysema, they can't breathe, they gotta get a hole put in their throat, they gotta stick their finger in their throat to talk. And you know what? A lot of it is genetics. You know, some people can get away with more than others. You know, and you don't really know if what's gonna happen, you're rolling the dice. And I have a pretty crazy story of a very good friend of mine uh, about maybe 12 years ago, right when insulin got really popular, all the bodybuilders were taking insulin. And, you know, it was kind of a, an underground thing. You know, most people didn't know about it, but, you know, the people in the little click world of bodybuilding were aware. And, uh, you know, this guy that I was friends with at the gym, he decided to take insulin. He didn't ask me about it, didn't tell me about it. He just decided. He got a bottle of insulin and he took a shot. He went to work and he was a bouncer and he was tired. So, you know, he told, uh, you know, the head guy, he said, look, I'm gonna lay down in the back room for like 45 minutes, man, just cover me. I just don't feel good, just, you know, I'm gonna lay down for a little bit. So he said, oh, okay, no problem, bro, I'll cover for you, you know, go ahead, I'll wake you up in an hour. So he went and uh, his name was Samson, 330 pounds, monster, didn't compete, you know, never wanted to compete, just a big ass dude. So anyway, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> anyway, so he goes, he lays down in the back room, takes a nap, and uh, about eight hours goes by, and the club's closing, and it's like, where the hell's Samson at? You know what I mean? And forget, people didn't even realize he was working. So he's like, oh shit, I was supposed to wake up an hour ago, you know, an hour after he laid down, he's in the back room. So they go in the back room, and he had throw up all over him. And he had been throwing up laying on his back and seizure after seizure after seizure after seizure. And they called an ambulance and, you know, he was basically dead is what they said. They revived him and he is now in a wheelchair and he cannot feed himself. Now, this is some serious shit I'm talking about. And this is from taking one shot of insulin making one small little mistake. Now, everybody out there, I believe, knows that insulin drops your blood sugar to zero. So you have to eat carbs and sugar to bring it back up. And therefore, it pushes nutrients into the muscles, feeds the muscles, um, you know, and aids in growth and recovery. So him not knowing this, he didn't eat any sugar. He didn't eat any carbs. He took a shot, didn't feel good, not feeling good as his blood sugar dropped. He felt tired, he felt lethargic, he felt like he was gonna pass out, he needed to lay down. That's the worst thing you could do. You know, he should have been drinking Gatorade, eating sugar, whatever it took to bring his blood sugar levels back. But he was uneducated, he had no idea what he was doing, and he just took a shot, went and laid down, and now he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, and he can't feed himself. And you know, this is a true story, and you know, insulin can kill you. But if you know what you're doing, and you know you're supposed to eat carbs, you know, they say you're supposed to eat about 10 grams of carbs for every IU of insulin you inject. Now, if you follow this protocol, obviously I double that, sometimes triple that. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry, and plus, the more carbs you eat, you know, just the more you're pushing into the muscles and the better effects you're gonna get. If you follow this, there's no danger whatsoever. But the point is, if you don't know what you're doing, you could kill yourself. So is this sport dangerous? Well, yeah, it can be. It could kill you, you know what I'm saying? But you have to educate yourself. You have to know what you're doing. You can't just go blindly, you know, and do something that you hear other people are doing. So this is a lesson learned and I hope this helps people understand how important it is to be educated on all these things. If you ever choose to go down that road, I'm not recommending it, but if you do make that choice, make sure you're well educated.